there, Big Blue family. As your Vice President for Student Affairs, it is my pleasure to work with each of our students to carve out their unique journey. A journey that will be transformational. A journey that will be life-changing, beginning and ending, with much enthusiasm, reflection, and purpose. And for all of us watching this evening, we begin a new year. And while it is a year like no other, whether you be a first-year student just stepping into your journey or a returning student continuing your journey, this year promises to be filled with exciting opportunities. While we will begin many of these journeys in a remote and virtual fashion this year, before we know it, we will return to a holy in-person experience. I want you to hold this excitement in your heart and know that soon enough you will be engaging in these opportunities in all corners of the university and beyond. From the classroom, to the field, to the stage, to the local elementary school or hospital, to the studio, to the residence hall, or even to places across the globe, as some of you study abroad in our many programs. Be open to these opportunities and don't underestimate the power of these short-term visual, virtual experiences. Let your journey expand your personal life of meaning and value. Don't sit on the sidelines, engage in the immersive experience known as Millican. Take advantage of all that you see along the way. And as you step into this new school year, please think about how you can support safety in the big blue. Wear your face coverings at all times when you are around others. Practice social distancing, frequent hand washing, and disinfect the personal surfaces you touch daily. And while these personal habits are extremely important, being what we call a good bystander is very important. Many times we talk about being a good bystander in terms of promoting anti-racist behavior, denouncing any offensive bias or discriminatory behavior, and encouraging appropriate boundaries between others. And this is expected bystander behavior here at Milliken. Our student body are advocates for social justice and equity. And in this important bystander behavior that is already a part of the Millican fabric, I also need you to include positive safety behaviors as it pertains to COVID-19 in your bystander playbook. If you see something, say something, whether that be observing a peer, treating another person poorly, or hearing a statement that threatens our inclusive community or endangers the safety of another, report it but also kindly speak up when you see a face covering worn incorrectly or not at all, or someone getting too close to another person and not practicing social distancing. And even more importantly, challenge your peers to do their part and role model the way. Don't support or attend gatherings off campus or events that are not approved. Don't let yourself get too comfortable in the Millie bubble and forget your face covering or go in for that big blue hug we are all so fond of. We will get there. In time, we will all be hanging out in person again, attending amazing campus events and taking in those hallway hugs and high fives. But we won't get there if we don't all practice our plan. We need to keep each other safe and that means vigilant compliance with our campus safety pledge. Sign it and do it. It's your responsibility as a member of our campus community. All of us will influence how quickly we are able to resume performance learning in person and our rich co-curricular programs. It's up to you and it's up to all of us. Be safe, Big Blue, and welcome again to the class of 2024. We are so glad you are here. I just want to offer a warm welcome to all of you. Welcome to Milken University. Uh, some of you and, uh, and I share something in common. This is my first semester at Milliken University. My name is Jim Reynolds. I'm the 16th president of Milliken, and I grew up in Decatur, just six blocks from this campus. Um, and so I have a lot of fond memories of Milliken growing up uh, and feel privileged and proud to be a part of the university now. There are a couple of things that I want you to know about Milliken as we start this journey together. The first is, is that I know that the faculty and staff are here and absolutely devoted to your success. So make use of them. Make certain that you ask them the questions that you need to have answered. Secondly, I'm here for you as well. Let me be your advocate whenever you need me to be. And lastly, this is probably something that you've heard a lot recently, but this is one of those more unusual times in our history. And so what I'm asking for all of you to do is to help us out and to do those four little things that we've been trying to talk about at great lengths whenever we can. The first thing is to wear a mask and wear it properly. Whenever you're in class or even passing to go to class, this is a time to really practice good mask wearing. Secondly, wash your hands often. Um, if you need a reminder of how long to wash your hands, sing the birthday song two times through in your head. That will help you, that's about 20 seconds. The third thing is Make sure you're social distancing. 
um, it's hard because you have friends and people that you haven't seen for a while, but we really need you to practice social distancing. And then lastly, if you don't feel well, it's okay, don't go to class. Call somebody, let them know. Please don't come to class or come to work if you don't feel well. Again, it's really a privilege for me to be here. I look forward to meeting all of you sometime very soon on campus. I'll be the guy wear, wearing a tie-dye mask. Uh, so stop by, say hello to me. I'd love to get to know you better, but thanks for being here and go Big Blue. Hi, my name is Johanna Komish. I'm a senior at Millican and I'm serving as your student representative to the Board of Trustees. When I chose to attend Millican three years ago, I was deciding on a school that would challenge me academically, but I was also choosing an environment where I would be challenged to become the best version of myself. This school year, the challenge will be heightened for all of us. For our returning students, we've rolled with the changes of last semester, and we can bravely look forward to this next semester with the skills and lessons we've learned. To our new students, you are not alone. You have an entire campus community that you can depend on. It is always okay to ask for help. Together, we can all do our best to keep our campus safe while pursuing the goals and dreams that drew us to Millican. This challenge starts right now. The attitudes, behaviors, and norms that we establish together will set the tone for this semester. It's everyone's responsibility to make sure that we set out on the right foot and remain ever steadfast on our path. Now, I'd like to introduce you to our student speaker, Marcus Hayes. Class of 2024, I'm greatly humbled and so excited to be able to welcome you to the Big Blue family. I remember sitting exactly where you are, not literally, but just in your shoes, being young, maybe afraid, maybe excited, maybe sad to leave home or glad to gain your independence, maybe ready to start anew or take the next step towards a goal you've already set. Some of you have figured out what you want to do already, and others of you haven't. Some may be bringing in baggage to college, and some might be ready to leave it at the door. But through any circumstance, random, destined, or planned, you're here now. Ready or not, here you are. And I, Marcus Hayes, welcome you to the Big Blue family. Ready or not, welcome home. So I want to continue this welcoming with a story. It's the life story, but also a story that describes my experience here at Millican. It's the story of two builders told from the perspective of a master builder. Here it is. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, but it didn't fall because it's had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So in this story, I was one of the two builders. I came into Millican, a student athlete, 26 on my ACT, a decent GPA, and leadership accolades to buff up my application. I had the right tools, the right blueprints, the right qualifications, and enough training to successfully build a house. But training is done. It's time to get my hands dirty. Ready or not, I'm now a builder. My blueprint may be different than yours, and yours different from mine. Our houses will appear different. Not everyone's a nursing major or a music major, or a theater major or a business major. Some of you know what your house will look like when you're done building. And some of you guys have so many beautiful ideas that you just don't know which blueprint to choose from. But ready or not, your house will look different. But what distinguishes the two builders? It's not the appearance. I'm thankfully a twin brother. And a lot of you already know who he is. If not, you probably will. His name is Adam Hayes, and he is also a senior nursing major on course to graduate in the spring. Twins, yes. But our building process has been different. He's played football all three years. I took a semester off. He's an RA, I'm a peer mentor and a residential academic peer mentor and a supplemental instructor. There were times where we had the same required course to graduate, but took them at different points of our academic career. Same blueprint, just different process of building. Everybody has a process, but ready or not, yours will be different. But what distinguishes the two builders isn't even the same process of building. I've been foolish and wise, but sometimes more foolish before anything else, and that's so important. I've failed, and I've failed hard. I've fallen short. No one's perfect. A toxic version of yourself, myself that I've become, uh, is someone that just starts believing that they don't need any help. And so in every part of this building process, I've found that failure is the gasoline for growth, but it needs a spark of humility to take you anywhere. It takes community, a crew of like-minded construction workers to build a house. So ready or not, we need each other. 
But finally, what separated the two builders? What was the difference between the wise and the foolish? It wasn't the appearance of the house, nor the way they built it, nor the people along the way who helped. It's the foundation. Because guys, the storm's already here. COVID-19, social and racial injustice, presidential elections, erupting volcanoes, the fatal explosion in Lebanon, all kinds of rain and rising streams and destructive winds. Maybe a few of you have your own storms you're going through. Maybe you're getting out of one, and maybe yours just started. But ready or not, the storm is coming. I'm not the master builder. I'm still learning to build my own house myself. But my academic foundation has been built on faith, sacrifice, and diligence. To you, I'm not even a builder, but one of your own construction workers, a servant. I'm a helping hand, an encourager, and a tool to use in building your own house. I'll be here to praise your successes and to help you learn from your failures. I'm here for you to help to keep the project going, even when you've lost hope in the blueprint. So class of 2024, welcome to freshman year, the foundation of your house. And your house will be tested. Exams, freedom, decisions, discovery, success, failure. So be wise, have fun, learn, ask for help, build together. Because ready or not, welcome home. You're here now, you're a builder. Your house might look different and it might require a different journey. The storm is coming and we need each other. Guys, life itself is a storm. But maybe if you have the right foundation, maybe you can learn to dance in the rain. I can't wait to see you guys this fall. God bless you guys and go Big Blue. Hi, I'm Jeff Aper, provost here at Millican University. I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk with you tonight, though I wish so much that circumstances were different and we could be gathered together in Kirkland Fine Arts Center to celebrate the beginning of a new academic year. Prior to introducing our faculty speaker, I'd like to recognize those faculty members who received tenure and promotion this past year. These individuals have devoted their time to the mission of this institution and to enriching the student experience at Millican University. Granted tenure and or promoted to associate professor were Dr. Laura Dean, Professor Angela Miller, and Professor Jessa Wilcoxon. Promoted to full professor were Dr. Mike Hollis George, Dr. Eric Rourke, and Dr. Jennifer Schroeder. I'm going to ask them to stand wherever they are right now and wherever you are right now, please join me in giving them a hand for their important contributions to their fields of study and to the success of Millican University students. Each year, our keynote speaker for opening convocation is the Millican University faculty member who received the Sirwinski Award for Teaching Excellence and Leadership, presented at the Honors Convocation the previous spring. We didn't have a normal Honors Convocation last spring, but we did still honor a faculty member with this important award. The Sirwinski Award is given to an individual who has exemplified outstanding teaching and has also made a major impact on the campus community through important leadership efforts. The winner of the Sirwinski Award last spring is known for outstanding teaching and ability in the classroom, the studio, and the theater but has also taken on important and demanding leadership roles, demonstrating high levels of commitment and effectiveness in working with Millican faculty, staff, students, and the Board of Trustees. This past spring, the recipient of the prestigious award was Professor Mary Black of the School of Theater and Dance. Professor Black joined the Millican University faculty in 2009 Service to Millican and the greater academic community has been an integral part of her MU career. She holds the rank of Associate Professor of Theater and is a technical director and designer. Her past credits include technical work at Indiana University Theater and Opera programs, Iowa Summer Repertory Theater, Brown County Playhouse, and the University of Iowa Theater and Opera programs. She's been actively involved in the United States Institute for Theater Technology and has published and presented at US ITT national conferences. In 2009, she was awarded the KM Fabrics Technical Production Award through US ITT. She also designed scenery and lighting, including credits at the Station Theater in Urbana, Illinois, and the Decatur Park District Best of Summer Stock Program for Decatur Youth. It's my sincere honor to introduce you to the 2020 winner of Millikan's Sirwinski Teaching Excellence and Leadership Award and tonight's featured speaker, Professor Mary Black.
Welcome, Millikan faculty, staff, and students. And an extra special welcome to our first year students, the class of 2024. You are entering college at an unprecedented time. Are you tired of hearing that expression yet? This pandemic has brought hardships and challenges you never could have anticipated. But the fact that you are here, even remotely, shows that you are ready to step up and meet those challenges. And there is a bright side. This spring has been a wild ride, but it has also brought us streaming access to the single greatest piece of musical theater of our time, Lin-Manuel Miranda's Hamilton. Now, I am a great lover of musical theater in general and a huge Hamilton fangirl. I'm also a helplessly cheesy individual. So when I was asked to put together some thoughts and advice for you students at the start of a new year, it was inevitable that I would choose to focus that advice around five great quotes from this incredible musical. So let's get started. Throughout the musical, Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton take different approaches to success. While Hamilton works nonstop, writing to defend his beliefs, the revolution, and the constitution, Burr takes a back seat. Our first quote comes from act two, when Burr realizes this method will only take him so far. Burr sings, I want to be in the room where it happens. This is your first piece of advice for the new year. Be in the room where it happens. Even if that room is a digital one, Many of your classes will be online or hybrid this fall, and in some ways that will make it easier for you to disengage. Don't. Be present and active in your own education. Some of you will struggle this fall. You'll need to show up for yourselves as well. If you struggle academically or with your mental health, know that resources are available, even remotely. Reach out to a faculty or staff member you trust, and they will help to connect you with the resources you need. Our second quote comes from the quick-witted Angelica Schuyler in her introductory number, The Schuyler Sisters. She reminds us to work. This simple piece of advice is as straightforward as they come. You will need to work hard this year. We all will. Your faculty and staff have been working incredibly hard over the past few weeks and months to prepare classes and facilities for new modes of teaching and learning. You too will need to work hard to adapt and to excel in a new learning environment. Put in the work and time, and someday soon this pandemic will have passed, and you will be able to lead rather than follow your peers as knowledgeable, skilled, and successful students, scholars, artists, and athletes. Next, we turn to Hamilton himself for words of wisdom. When he first meets Aaron Burr, offers him a piece of advice. Talk less, smile more. Don't let them know what you're against or what you're for. But Hamilton disagrees. The revolution's imminent. What do you stall for? If you stand for nothing, Burr, what will you fall for? Now, more than ever, is the time to stand up for what you believe in. The murder of George Floyd this May triggered nationwide protests against racial injustice and police brutality. Now is the time for those of us who believe in equality and justice to proudly declare that black lives matter. It is the time to stand up and demand positive change in all our institutions, our communities, our organizations, our classes, and our teams. If we fail to use this moment to build a more equitable and just society, then we are choosing to be part of the problem rather than the solution. Throughout the musical, Hamilton finds his opportunities to stand up for what he believes in. In his most famous and arguably most brilliant number, he raps, I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. These words have inspired young people everywhere. Most of you are young, and I hope you're hungry, hungry for knowledge and hungry for change. Now is your time. You all know that 2020 is an election year. Four years ago, only half of 18 to 29 year olds voted. And in 2016, that number was only 36%. Whatever your views, whatever your beliefs, if you are eligible to vote in this country, it is not just your right to vote, it is your obligation. You are all here because you are seeking higher education. Educate yourselves on the races in the district where you vote, not just the presidential candidates. Who is your county state's attorney? And what is their record? Local elections matter. They shape our communities, our schools, our police forces, our housing, our public transportation, and our drug and alcohol ordinances. If you have recently moved to Decatur, to the residence halls, the woods, or off-campus housing, you are eligible to vote here. Get registered, get informed, volunteer, and then go vote. 
I want to end on a note of optimism because did I mention I'm cheesy? So I will turn back to the words of Angelica Schuyler. Look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. The world is changing right before our eyes and we all have an opportunity to be a part of it. For years to come, we will tell stories about the year 2020. We have opportunities to build and embrace new ways of learning, competing, and creating. We have opportunities to build new and better technologies and communities. You are embarking on a new journey this year, and it is up to each of you to shape that journey. Don't throw away your shot.